Remember when we were kids and we had a little piggy bank at home and every time one of our parents would come home with some small change, we would get to put those coins in the piggy bank and it would make a cool cha-ching sound. Well, I really remember that as a little girl. I would wait eagerly for that moment, that my piggy bank would fill up and that much awaited moment will arrive. That's it. I'll get to open the piggy bank and count all the money I'd saved up. Since those days, we grew up a bit and we probably don't use the same little piggy banks to save our money. And yet, the voices of our parents saying how important it is to save our money dollar to dollar to get ahead in life keeps on resonating in our head, even though it was many years ago. Unfortunately, we taught how to save our money, but we were not taught how to invest it, how to make money from money, how to make our money start working. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie Foreman. I'm 33 years old, happily married and a mom to two sweet boys. I have a BA in management and an MBA specializing in funding, capital market and organizational consulting. I'm currently studying for my PhD. I trade on the stock market, am an academic lecturer, consult for mortgages and a licensed portfolio manager and manage a Facebook community of 33,000 members called Let's Talk About Money. So let's talk about $1,000 saving, which you may have in your bank account. What can you do with it? You probably can't buy a house. If you want to invest it in the stock market, you may not have the necessary tools and knowledge to know where to invest your money. And the last thing you want to do is to gamble on it and possibly lose it. So what is the solution? Why don't you just leave it in your bank account? Because that is a safe place for your money. You can't lose it there, right? But what many don't know is that money in the bank account just loses money. That's right. Money in the bank account loses money. In a year, this $10,000 will be worth less. They will still be $10,000. And if you put them in a saving plan, you may have even saved up a bit of interest. So how do you lose it? The answer is simple. If I had $100 to shop in the supermarket a year ago, and I would use it to buy groceries. Then today, with the exact same $100, I would walk into the same store and buy less. The value of our money is decreasing and we can buy less with the same amount of money. That's why we're losing money when we leave it in our bank account. But we don't feel it because our $1,000 are still $1,000, even though there are worth significantly less. So what can we do? The answer is invest your money. But Natalie, that's not fair. You have a professional background in investments and in stock market. You learned it and you are living in that world. Most of us don't know that world as well. You are right. Allow me to tell you the story of $1,000 for the very first time. First, $1,000 can go to a saving plan in your bank for 30 years. By the end of that time, you will be looking at about $360,000. The other option is to invest those $1,000. Now, I'm not going to consult you how to invest your money. They are far better than me. And as Warren Buffett recommended, 
just invest the money in the index. Let's review some statistics. The S&P 500 index, which contains the 500 stocks with the highest market cap in the US, achieved in the, in the last 100 years an average return of 10% a year. If you take those $1,000 and invest them every month, you will have at the end of the period of 30 years an amount of approximately over $2 million. Yes, you heard right, over $2 million. And you can say, but Natalie, you are talking to me about investments, how to invest in the index. I'm not at all familiar with index, stocks, or returns. Needless to say how to invest on my own. So what am I doing? You are totally right. This is indeed true. It is very easy for me to tell you to invest your money on index. That is because investments and stock markets are my specialty. This is my profession. This is what I learned for so many years. And this is my day to day. But there are many fields that I'm not at all familiar with. Whenever I need to dye or cut my hair, I go to the hair salon because if I will take a ball with some hair products and try to rub it on my hair, I am not be left with any hair on my head. And whenever something breaks down in my car, rather than calling my husband, I go straight to the car mechanic because I have no idea how to fix it by myself. Even at home, if something breaks down, or if I have an electric issues, I don't even think about going near the electricity because this is dangerous. You can get electrocuted or even die. I simply invite a certified electrician to fix the problem. So why is it so strange for us to outsource our financials? All that I do and all that I'm capable of doing is possible only because I outsource. Each and every one of you, every day, is using outsource in a variety of areas. Why is it so strange for you to outsource and make your money work? To make your money to do more money? That is right, as you need to choose the right mechanic or electrician to be reliable and trustworthy this is exactly how you need to choose the professional that will help you find the right way to invest your money. And yes, this has to be done correctly and professionally. And if this is something that you are not good at and don't know how to do it exactly as you daily outsource many areas, you need to do the same to your finance and get your money work. I understand your fear. You have two choices. You can either leave it at the bank and just let it lose its value, or you can invest it. It can be challenging and stressful because this is not your area of specialty, but the solution is very easy. Go to the right professional to teach you and show you how to get your money to work. Thank you very much.